world. Today we're answering the question, who the heck is Devin? Well, if you haven't been living under multiple rocks, you've probably heard of Devin. Devin is the first AI software engineer who a lot of people are saying that this is AGI, artificial general intelligence, that it's gonna kill all software engineering jobs, that coding is dead forever. You shouldn't learn to code. You shouldn't get into tech. As a software engineer, it's taking all of our jobs. Devin, this one guy is just gonna do all of the software engineering jobs. Can we all stop freaking out so much? You can freak out a little bit because it is quite cool, but it is not earth shatteringly cool. We're going to talk about who the heck is Devin? What can Devin actually do? Because he's been doing a lot. He's on Upwork, he's doing software engineering interviews. And if AI like Devin is gonna actually take over software engineering jobs anytime soon, and most importantly, what you should be doing to prepare, whether you're a beginner, whether you've been in the industry for years, whatever it is, we're gonna talk about how you should prepare. I would also love to hear your thoughts. Let me know in the comments below what you think will happen in the next year or two or five to software engineering as a whole. It is midnight right now, so we're gonna do our best, but I really, really wanted to have this conversation because we need to talk about Devin. So grab your drink of choice and let's spill the tea. It was created I'm by Scott Cognition, Cognition Labs, AI. a startup that literally nobody's heard of until quite literally this week, but it is backed by Peter Thiel who co-founded PayPal with Elon Musk, Zero to One, great read, you should read his book, loved it. It's backed by a lot of Silicon Valley and they created the first AI software engineer. It can turn simple commands, like a simple prompt, into full-fledged applications, even video games. The biggest, coolest thing is that it managed to outperform ChatGPT and Quad and every AI known to man right now in the software engineering performance benchmarks. So what does this mean? It managed to solve nearly 14% of real GitHub issues. Keep in mind, these are from open source projects and it outperformed a lot of real human developers. It was also able to apply for and actually complete jobs on Upwork, which as a former Upworker, you know, I made like maybe 7K on, at one point in time. Honestly, applying to jobs on Upwork, I actually made a Chrome extension to help with this, is extremely annoying, but super straightforward. This is something that you can automate. So that is not impressive. Also, it was able to complete a lot of software engineering interviews. I interviewed so many people for Google software engineering roles. Any AI could do that even before. ChatGPT could do that. Not that impressed. What is actually impressive is the fact that all of this is integrated into one place. It is interesting, but a lot of this stuff has happened through autonomous agents through agent GPT or God mode or all of these different autonomous agents. Sure, it is impressive that it has a 14% on the software engineering performance benchmark, but is 14% really what we're aiming for? Like, let's just take a step back, okay? Because humans are doing a lot better than that right now. And I think it'll take a really long time for AI to get to the point where it's gonna replace all software and engineering jobs. But I do think it's a huge risk for newcomers and for beginners in the field and things like that. So let's talk about all of that good stuff in this video. First of all, what is Devin? So let's play some parts of the demo right now. Hey, I'm Scott from Cognition AI. And today I'm really excited to introduce you to Devin. Okay, first of all, look at Scott's face. Do you really think he would have such a nice nice face if he was taking all our jobs. Of course he would. Everybody in Silicon Valley is trying to replace software engineering jobs and whoever is gonna be the first to do it is gonna make a lot of money. That's what everybody's trying to do. But that doesn't mean it's gonna happen anytime soon. So let's talk about why this demo is also just not as impressive as everybody's making it out to be. In a demo, you're showing the best version of the product. You're not showing the product in the bad ways, in the, you know, when it doesn't work. You're showing the highlight reel of a product. So let's take this demo with a grain of salt. Okay, my first part that I love about this video is that we specify that Scott Wu, the CEO of Cognition AI, is a human software engineer. So we're entering a realm, we're entering a space where we're gonna have to distinguish between human and non-human software engineers, which is actually quite exciting. And honestly, I'm excited to work with the AI software engineers more than the human ones. Today, I'm really excited to introduce you to Devin. I'm gonna ask Devin to benchmark the performance of Llama on a couple of different API providers. 
So he asks, so here in the demo, we ask Devin to benchmark Llama 2 on three different providers, replicate together and perplexity. All right, so first Devin makes a step-by-step -step plan on how to tackle the problem. This is very similar to Agent GPT, to uh, God Mode. There's a lot of different autonomous agents that have been doing this kind of stuff where they can list out an action plan and then continuously perform those actions without any kind of human intervention. This is not something new. I don't know why people are so impressed by this, but yes, okay, he can make a little plan and implement all the different steps. As software engineers, we do the exact same thing, but with a lot of procrastination and coffee breaks in between the steps. The big advantage is that you know, AI works a little bit faster than we do. After that, it builds the whole project using all the same tools that a human software engineer would use. Devin has its own command line, its own code editor, and its own browser, which is pretty cool. Actually, that is quite nifty. In this case, Devin decides to use the browser to pull up API documentation so that it can read up and learn how to plug into each of these APIs. Okay, my first thing that I really like about Devin is that he actually reads the documentation. I know 95% of you guys are not reading the documentation. So plus one points for Devin, negative one for human software engineers. Here Devin runs into an unexpected error. What I don't like about Devin is that when he runs into an unexpected error, the first thing he does is console log. Okay, I'm kidding. That's the first thing I would do. That's the first thing you would do. But I find it interesting that he's going for print statements right away. You would think that because he's an AI, he doesn't even need to print to console. I don't understand why it is that that's how he debugs. And I bet he can't use breakpoints or, you know, more intricate debugging techniques like humans can. So plus one for humans, negative one for Devin. But still, he resolves this problem quite fast and makes us a little graph too. So Cognition AI CEO says they've been able to make all of these advancements because they've made advancements in both reasoning and long-term planning. The, the biggest problem I see with this is that as software engineers, so little of our job is actually writing code. Most of our job is understanding requirements, understanding the system, reading actual code, understanding, I mean, the AI is gonna also read the code base and do that, but I don't think AI is at the point where it can fully understand requirements. So there is a lot of room for improvement in terms of the business side of things. AI cannot do any of that yet. The other less impressive things that people are freaking out about is that a big part of the interview process is seeing the thought process of the person, is seeing how they deal with unexpected things. It's very hard to see that in an AI. Like, of course, an AI can run a really good fizz buzz or whatever. You know, a, a good AI can obviously do that, but that does not mean that it is gonna be a good real world software engineer. Because for that, you need to understand client requirements. You need to be able to work with multiple APIs and sure, that's, that demo showed that happening, but did it show it happening in a real world application where you have intricate infrastructure, where you have microservices and Kubernetes clusters and things all talking to each other? I really, really doubt we're at the point where AI will actually be able to do that very soon. We still need software engineers to deal with intricate and more complex infrastructure and software. If anything, it would actually be amazing. Like I would love to have something like Devin help me in creating good infrastructure and writing better code and writing better tests in speeding up my process and being my pair programmer instead of actually replacing me. I very much doubt that this will actually replace good software engineers. Is this gonna be a threat to junior software engineers? Is this gonna be a threat to people just entering the field who have no idea what they're doing or how to write good software? Absolutely, yeah, this is gonna be a really big threat to newcomers into the industry, to beginners, to people that aren't in tech yet. And it's gonna make that bar go back up. So yes, it's gonna become a lot harder, but is it totally going away? Absolutely not, not anytime soon. There's still gonna be so many opportunities in tech for those that put in the work and actually grow their career to a point where they are better than AI, because that's what it comes down to. Are you better than AI? Then you're gonna have a job. If you're not better than AI, no, you probably won't have a job or you'll have to pivot into doing something else with your career or your life or whatever. But that's pretty much what it boils down to. 
it's always gonna boil down to, are you better than AI? If we're gonna talk about the potential impact on software engineering, this is definitely gonna help a lot of software engineers automate a lot of the really repetitive, annoying grunt work of being a software engineer. You know, I really despise some of the grunt work of being a software engineer. It really puts me into this masculine energy where I am just so frustrated with these stupid problems that, you know, take hours to fix something so trivial as changing a few letters or changing a regex or whatever it may be. And AI fixes that. Like AI allows you to do the more creative work, the more higher level, bigger picture thinking that makes software engineering so much more interesting. So I'm actually extremely excited about tools like this and not afraid at all about losing my job, but rather having more interesting jobs to work on. And I honestly wish a lot of us were thinking more in that way because you should be thinking, how can I integrate AI into my workflow, into my work, into my life to better myself and better the outcomes? Anyway, there are so many limitations to this AI. First of all, I wanna say demos are completely different than what the AI can actually do and achieve. I won many hackathons where we did demos of our product that wasn't actually fully functional. We showed exactly what we wanted the people to see in the demo. We showed the best parts of the product. So keep that in mind. Secondly, the AI still cannot understand business requirements. Is Devin gonna sit down in a meeting with a client for an hour and understand what the client wants? And the client doesn't even understand what the client wants. Like this is a perfect example here of a client showing you know, what they want. Is Devin gonna be able to understand this? Because I can't, I can't even understand this. So that is a huge limitation. And thirdly, Devin is trained on open source, publicly available code, and also the software engineering benchmark that's on open source projects. So I'd love to see this AI run on enterprise level software, on legacy code, on really bulky applications, on Google's code. And finally, software engineering is so much more than just coding. As a software engineer, you are coding probably 10% of the time, like actual sitting down and typing in code. The rest of the time, you're in meetings, understanding requirements, you are reading documentations, you're understanding the pipelines, you're integrating different systems, you're always doing something that's not writing code. Like maybe we'll get to that point soon, but not at all anytime soon where you should be worried about your job if you are a good software engineer. Let's make the advice really quick. First of all, stop freaking out so much. When you're doing things from a fear-based place, you are not gonna be successful. You wanna do things from an abundance mindset. And what does that mean? It means embracing AI. It means working together with these new tools. It means, you know, learning as much as you can about AI, about which tools I should use, about how I should optimize my workflow, how I should strategize, instead of coming from a fear-based perspective and pushing it away. That is probably the worst thing you could do right now, as well as the worst thing you could do is freaking out to the point where you're not even gonna bother pursuing tech or pursuing a computer science degree or pursuing whatever it is you wanna be pursuing because there are still people out there getting really amazing software engineering jobs, growing amazing software engineering careers, and you can 100% be one of those people if you work to be one of the best. If you wanna be a Stack Overflow copy pasting you know, glorified API for chat GPT where you don't actually do any critical thinking, then yeah, you will get replaced. I'm so sorry, that's just, you know, how the world is right now. If you wanted a lazy girl job where you do nothing, then maybe consider content creation instead. No, I'm kidding. This is actually way more work than software engineering. Honestly, the biggest thing you can do is learn AI, don't give up, have a good mindset, implement, AI strategies into your workflow and into your life so that you are integrated with it instead of pushing it away. Focusing on your human skills and what you can do that the AI can't. And of course, as always, learning as much as you can. This is a really amazing time to be alive in human history. This is extremely exciting and I'm excited to be in this ride with you. You're gonna be just fine as long as you aim to be better than average as a software engineer, you're gonna be okay. And the biggest thing you can do is subscribe to this channel for more AI content. I'm gonna be talking a lot more about AI uh, because I really wanna help all of you, you know, stop freaking out. 
I really don't think there's a reason you should be freaking out right now. I would love to hear your thoughts down below though. Let me know if you are freaking out or why, and we can have a whole conversation about it. But liking the video for the algorithm and I will see you in the next video where we're gonna talk more about the layoffs that are happening, the, the future of tech and things like that. So if you're interested, make sure you stick around and I will see you in the next one. Bye.